Welcome to Worship with Plymouth First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Susie Hutchison. If you are new here, our YouTube playlist is set up so that this video automatically rolls into the next. If you just stay put, you'll see Sunday School with the kids and worship music, both contemporary and traditional. But if you want to skip through to a particular part of worship, you can do that by clicking on one of the videos to the right of this frame. Though the leaders of the country may change every four years or so, the ruler over God's kingdom does not. And so today, like every other day, the church rises and calls all people to look to Christ, to allow themselves to be transformed by the radical life of Christ, and to be at work in the world as Christ has been. We give thanks for all the ways that you are engaged in the work of God's kingdom. Giving to the ministries and missions of this church is one way many of you have chosen to engage in that work. We have several options for giving. You can go to our website and click the Give button. You can text a, a donation via the number on the screen. You can give in the app or you can send a check or electronic fund transfer to, directly to the church. We're humbled and honored by the faith in our work you have exhibited throughout this year. This is week three of our four-week series on having a healthy and holy relationship with money. We began with Earn All You Can, which talked about the faithful act of using our time and talents in the world. And last week we talked about Save All You Can, which was a call to uh, spend faithfully, to do good, not cause harm, and stay in love with God by our expenditures. And this week we are in the third part of John Wesley's sermon, The Use of Money. It's known as Give All You Can. Next week is Celebration Sunday. It is the time we ask members, constituents, and anyone who wants to invest in God's work through this church to make a commitment of time, talents, and treasures to the church. This helps us to plan how we will be able to participate in God's work in 2021, and it gives you an opportunity to use your resources faithfully in the work of God's kingdom. Now, just as you have, we have asked you to examine how you earn, spend, and give, the church is in the process of asking these same questions of our work. We're asking hard questions about earning money, gaining income with integrity. We're questioning how we spend our resources of time and talents and treasures, trying to make sure that we act from faith, and faith in God's abundance, but also not wasting any of it, maximizing the return for the kingdom. And we're evaluating whether we as a church are giving with faithfulness. Are we keeping more than our fair share or are we really using our gifts in ways that transform the world? These are hard questions. Hard questions for us as individuals, and it is hard, even convicting questions for the church. But it's good work. So we continue. Hear this word from 1 Peter 4, verses 7 through 11. The end of everything has come. Therefore, be self-controlled and clear-headed so you can pray. Above all, show sincere love to each other, because love brings about the forgiveness of many sins. Open your homes to each other without complaining, and serve each other according to the gift each person has received, as good managers of God's diverse gifts. Whoever speaks should do so as those who speak God's word. Whoever serves should do so from the strength that God furnishes. Do this so that in everything God may be honored through Jesus Christ. To him be honor and power forever and always. Amen. Up until now, the equation that Wesley sets out in his sermon is this. First, earn all you can, then spend only what you need for a decent life. Now it becomes clear why the first two parts are important. The objective is to have a surplus so that you can give all you can. But we know that no matter how hard a person tries, this is not always the case. A 2015 study by the Kaiser Family Foundation found that medical bills cause 1 million U.S. adults to declare bankruptcy every year. 
and that 26% of Americans aged 18 to 64 struggle to pay medical bills. We know that 13.6% of people in the state of Michigan are food insecure, with 70% of those folks qualifying for SNAP or other government benefits. We know that even though evictions are supposed to be on hold due to COVID, Princeton University's eviction lab found that from September 4th through October 17th of this year, some 20,523 evictions were filed just in the 22 cities that they monitor. And even within this relatively wealthy suburban enclave where average household income is $115,000, still 4.5% of Plymouth residents live below the poverty line. Not everyone has enough money, much less a surplus to give. There is so much work to be done before the kingdom of God is realized here on earth. In our scripture reading today, we're told to serve each other according to the gift each person has received as good managers of the God's diverse gifts. I see two really important parts here. The first is that the gifts God has sown into the world are not all identical. They're intentionally diverse. The second is that we are called to be good stewards of those gifts to make sure that how we give these gifts to the world is a reflection of God. So what are the gifts that God has given you? We can find all kinds of answers throughout the Bible and at Plymouth First we're developing pathways to discipleship that include exploring and naming those gifts as well as helping you find how to live them out faithfully. In church lingo, we often talk about time, talents, and treasures. All of us have some balance of those things. The retired person has a great deal more time than the person working two jobs to make the mortgage payment. The kingdom of God needs both of you and all those who are somewhere in between. There are people with the very visible talents of making music in front of the whole congregation, and, and there are those whose talents are more behind the scenes, like visiting with the homebound or doing data entry. There are people who lead with grace and dignity, and there are those who possess wise eyes to see how best to support others. The kingdom of God needs all those talents and many, many more. There are people whose treasures are large. Their trusts will leave an endowment for the work of this church to continue for years after their life is over. There are people whose financial gifts fund scholarships for people like me to go to seminary. There are people whose financial gifts make possible crayons and paper for the children of the church or the carpets to get cleaned. The kingdom of God needs treasures of all sizes and many more. But how about the church? At Plymouth First UMC, we are honored for the generous ways you freely share your gifts in the ministries here. And we are accountable for being faithful stewards of what you have entrusted to us. So it's fair to ask how we as the church use the time, talents, and treasures we have been given. I truly believe that God, through the Holy Spirit, has placed in this congregation exactly the gifts that we need to do the work that God is calling us to. So... When there seems to be a deficit, it means one of three things. Either the leadership of the church is unaware of who possesses those gifts God has planted here, or the bearer of those gifts doesn't believe the church is the best way to use them, or the leadership is wrong about what God is calling it to do. As church leaders, we are constantly seeking the will of God listening for the Holy Spirit is calling us into God's work in the present. Sometimes we think we have a pretty good grip on it. Then we get a midstream change. Think COVID. The needs of our community changed overnight, so the church had to change overnight. It wasn't fun, but it was a faithful response to a changed world. We can never stop asking the question, is what we're doing now truly where God is calling us in this time and in this place. 
That's why taking an inventory of what God has gifted us is a very important tool in evaluating where God is calling this church. That's why we ask every year that you make a prayerful and searching examination of what God has given you, and we ask you to give an honest estimation of how you will entrust your gifts of time, talents, and treasures to the work of Plymouth First UMC. Besides the time that is offered by members of the congregation, we also have the time of staff members. We have people working to develop and implement programs of faith development for children, youth, and adults. We have people working to bring quality worship both as a way to welcome new disciples and as a way to deepen people's faith journeys. We have staff that do important supportive work of keeping the financial property and administrative mechanisms of the church running. Part of being a good steward of time is constantly assessing whether these are the places God is calling the church. In COVID, or maybe just in the 21st century in general, we need to ask if we should be redirecting some of our time toward creating a better online experience for the congregation that is not in the pews. As church leaders, we do not let the church rest on its laurel, laurels. We are always looking at how to become a better church, how to better answer God's call for us. We need to know how to respond to God today and tomorrow. That's how we are faithful stewards of the time that has been entrusted to us. This church has also been gifted with a wide array of talents. And we celebrate how those talents have been at work in the kingdom of God. People with the gift of hospitality use their talents every November when we host Guest Week, a ministry housing the homeless. Though it will look different this year, there are still plenty of opportunities to engage with this ministry in the next couple weeks. People with the gift of craftsmanship have found ways to use their gifts on the ASP mission trip that makes homes safer, drier, and warmer in Appalachia. People with the gift of craftsmanship have built sound booths, bookshelves, mangers, and other things within the church, too. The church has faithfully stewarded the gifts of shepherds and leaders into the work of raising disciples through Sunday school, vacation Bible school, adult education, small groups, and accountability groups. We have stewarded musicians into bands, orchestras, choirs, and bells. Those gifted to teach and show compassion have the opportunity to tutor and care for the children in our, our corner ministry of this church. And lest we forget the talent of a strong body, we also have a faithful group of runners and walkers who raise money to provide safe drinking water through World Vision. These are just some of the ways that God has gifted the people of Plymouth First UMC. But what about the treasures? If we dared to ask you to earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can, if we dare to ask you to be faithful stewards of the treasures that God has given you, it's only fair to ask in return how is the church a good steward of the treasures we have been gifted by God through your generosity? Like with all the other gifts that this church has, we are constantly evaluating whether we are using our treasures for the greatest good of the kingdom. We ask staff people to make budgets for eking by and another for comfortably su sustaining current programs and even another for dreaming of expansion to live big in the kingdom. And we evaluate whether we are faithfully using our resources in the right proportion for the work of disciple making, mission, worship, and all the other roles of the church. We have stringent protocols for oversight and professional management of our money. But more than that, we have accountability. We have accountability to each other. To you who entrust us with your gifts, we are accountable to the people God has called us to serve, and we are accountable to God. 
one of the questions we continue to ask is how can we, the people of Plymouth First UMC, spend less on ourselves? How can we spend less on those of us who are already thriving in our faith so we can spend more on those people outside our doors who don't yet know the love and grace of God? We have to ask, is there a better way to convert our treasures into bold testimony of God's love for the world? For Advent, that season that precedes Christmas, this year we'll be doing something a little different. We're trying a new way to convert our treasures into the tangible witness of God's love for those outside our church doors. Instead of offering an Advent calendar where we get a treat every day or week, we'll be asking you to bring things to the church each week. And we'll be inviting the community to participate too. This is how it'll work. We'll have a stable set up on the front porch. Each week, we'll fill the stable with things that God has provided to the world, but which are not in the hands of God's people who desperately need them. Each week, we'll focus on a different need within our community. The first week, we'll be asking you to bring non-perishable foods, and by the end of the week, we hope to have a ton of food to share. The second week, we'll bring hygiene items. The third week, hats, gloves, socks, and week four, when we're all prepared for the birth of a baby in a manger, when we're all thinking about that young mother in Bethlehem giving birth in a stable, we'll bring baby supplies for the children who are still being born into a time and place of need. It is the church's job to convert the blessings that God has given us into blessings for the world. It is the church's job, just as it is each individual's job, to give all you can so that everyone knows the love of God in real and tangible ways. As our scripture today says, Above all, show sincere love to each other, because love brings about the forgiveness of many sins. Open your homes to each other without complaining and serve each other according to the gift each person has received as good managers of God's diverse gifts. Whoever speaks should do so as those who speak God's word. Whoever serves should do so from the strength that God furnishes. Do this so that in everything God may be honored through Jesus Christ. Citizens of God's kingdom, give all you can as faithful managers of God's diverse gifts of time, talents, and treasures. And may this church continue to do the same with the gifts you share with us. Amen. Please pray with me. God of all that is, was, and ever will be, we are humbled that you call us as you called our ancestors and as you will call our descendants into this work of your mighty kingdom. We are humbled that you entrust us with this work and empower us with the gifts to do it. Hear our words of thanksgiving. Thank you for the time you give us, time to rest in your presence, time to walk with the broken, time to run with passion toward your kingdom to come. Thank you for the talents you give us, those seeds the Spirit has planted in us and, and the faithful people who nurtured those seeds. Thank you for places and spaces in this world where our gifts make a difference, talents that remind us we are wondrously made. We thank you for the treasures, the treasures you give us for food in our cupboards and the roof over our heads and clothes on our back. We thank you for the ability to earn, to save, and to give. And we thank you for those who support us when our own efforts aren't enough. We give thanks for those people who used their treasures to help us close the gap between who we were and who you called us to be. Make us beacons of hope for those who are still seeking you. We pray, God, for your perfect revelation in this time and place. 
Make it known to us where you are at work. Show us our role in that work. Bear witness to the truth that all we earn, all we save, and all we give is out of nothing but our very devotion to you. Will God see our struggles and strengthen us to use them as training grounds rather than as stumbling blocks on our journey to do your will. Amen. Now let us worship to the glory of the one who has gifted and called us into the work of the kingdom to come. Amen. <laughs> 